In this animation, we'll take a look at how to create a process that uses a web template or a template that has a web context in order to return a web page to a browser. Now, first, of course, you need to make sure that the templates and the data mapping configurations are available within PlanetPress workflow. To do this, you use the package file feature. There's an animation for that in the designer module. Any process that is meant to return a web page to a, a web client must start with the HTTP server input task. And the HTTP server input task must have an HTTP action that is defined. The action basically is the name of the page that a client will access. So if I enter it means that whatever the server URL, so let's say localhost, I'll add slash WS index, and this is the process that will be triggered. We'll see exactly how that works in the browser in a moment. The MIME type can be auto detect, but I strongly suggest changing it to the text HTML because we know we'll always be returning HTML to the browser. Also, I suggest unchecking the loop through each attachment as a data file because that's only useful when you're actually receiving attachments in a form. For now, let's leave all the other options blank and click OK. Now, of course, this is not a functional web configuration, but I'll still send it to the server and show you how to actually access it in your browser. So what we want to do first is to send the configuration to the workflow service. And then we want to actually start the service. Now, if I open my browser and I go to the actual address, what I get in return by default is actually the request that the browser sends to the server. Because the only thing that we're doing here is receiving the request, and at the end of the process, whatever is the active job file will be returned to the browser. So here it's the input that we receive from the client, which is an XML file. The rest of the tasks that we'll use are all in the connect section of the workflow module. And it's actually fairly straightforward. We only need two tasks. The first is the execute data mapping, which will use an already pre-existing form data data mapping. Now, this data mapping configuration is pretty simple. The only thing it does is read the XML that is uh, given by the HTTP server input, and then it creates anonymous data from that. Let's take a look at the result from this data mapping. Because by default, the process sent to the C out folder, it means that the XML I received as an input was saved there. So let's load that. And we know it's an XML file, so we'll change that. Now, because this is a default request from a browser and not a form that we're sending, it doesn't have any identifying data to the client, except for maybe the IP address and the browser they're using. Now, if we step through the process until after the data mapping, then we realize I forgot something. Inside of the properties of any task that uses connect, you need to specify the username and password for the server. Now the default username, if you have not changed it in the server configuration is OLAdmin and the password is secret. All right, now let's try that again. And now we can go take a look at the information. Now this is in the metadata. And on the document, we can see that the record has been created properly. Now, if you want to see the information inside the record, just select the output records in metadata, and then you'll see all of the fields inside your record directly in the metadata. However, be warned that this can slow down your process a little bit. All right, so this is the information that we have available through the data mapping that I have created. Next up is actually creating the web content. Now the template that I created expects the information from the data mapping, obviously. And then I simply select the appropriate template. 
Now the record ID field is there because the create web content can only create a single record. So you need to define it basically. It has to correspond to the record ID that's output from the execute data mapping and only one of them just in case it actually creates more than one record. Because this is in the metadata, we need to actually go and grab it, but that can only be done in debug mode. So I'll just put a temporary number here and then uh, debug until the create web content in order to make the appropriate selection. Now here's one last option that you see in the create web content and it's called embed all resources. While it's not going to be useful in the process that we're presenting here, it is useful if you want to cache your web pages. What I mean by that is that the embed all resources option will basically integrate all of your external resources, including style sheets, JavaScript, and images inside of that one single HTML file. And then if you save that anywhere and display it on a browser or return it to a browser, every single one of the resources will be there. That means that you can save files somewhere and just send them back to the client directly and very quickly. But like I said, we'll just ignore it here and click on OK. And if I step through here, then we can actually see that the data file itself is indeed an HTML file. And that is exactly the template that I created. Let's actually take a look at it in the browser directly. Again, just sending the configuration and refreshing the browser. Now you've never actually seen this template and the configuration before. This is because it's actually part of a demonstration uh, package that we're providing to you. So if you want to access these files, simply point your browser to the following URL, connectdemos.ca.objectsifland.com and the OLSS web sales is the only one that's available. Just click on download demo and follow the instructions to get and install this package on your computer. Now here's a small recap of the process that we have. We start with an HTTP server input and we define the action that is important to it. Then we execute the data mapping using the configuration that we've previously sent using package file. And let's not forget to enter the proxy information. So the username password for the server. And then we create the output, the HTML output using the template that we sent. Again, don't forget the username password inside the proxy tab. Now the output plugin by default is a send to folder, but because we don't necessarily need to save the file, what I like to do is to finish off with a delete. I know it might sound weird, but the output task is kind of ignored by the HTTP server input. So it will return the uh, web page to the browser, even if you're actually deleting the job file after it's been returned. So that's it for a simple web process. Now there can be more complex processing done here, such as receiving form data, putting it in a database and retrieving information from a database. But um, like I said, the connect demos, the OLSS web sales demo has all of that. It has multiple processes doing all of these things. So I suggest you check out the process and download it for yourself.